Hello again. Bit of an unusual one this one, and I don't even know what to title it yet uh, because it's it's a, sort of you know covers a few areas. Uh, mainly, it's to do with um, OCD, and it's to do with flats, and it's also to do with uh, part of my fault finding process with uh, an issue that I was having recently that I've covered in a, a couple of other videos with regards to uh, my acquisition of a, a QHY 8L camera. So if you like want to know anything more about flats, um, you know everything that you wanted to know about flats but were afraid to ask, there's a little bit of that in it. Um, but also I'm, I'll, I'll show you one of the images that um, has the issue on it if you like and sort of my, my overall process that I went through to try and get to the bottom of it because it was something that was really causing me to turn my hair out. Uh, eventually it turned out I, I fixed a, a ground loop issue and that seemed to make, make everything sort of go away but um, along the road there was there were other slight issues that I just fixed as a matter of course it was sort of thinking well is that causing it is this a side effect of that well if I eliminate this and then try again um, so this is just like one such thing so what I'm going to do first is I'll just show you uh, an image uh, with, that shows this issue that I was having and point out what it is that the the process that I'm about to show you um, cured for me. So let's just have a look at the picture. Right, as you can see, this is a, an upside down image of the Orion Nebula, and I'll just go through a couple of the, the issues on this particular picture. Um, obviously, you can see these very dark marks that are looking like it's, it's dirt on the on the CCD sensor. So obviously the first thing that I did is I went through and cleaned all my image train, um, you know, cleaned my sensor, cleaned my, all my optics in my scope and everything. That cue at that point. Um, but you can see there's a vignette there that is very, very off center. It's like way over to the side instead of being sort of nice and central. Uh, you can actually see some sort of stepping in the vignette as well that doesn't look quite right. Although you can get that if you massively overstretch a picture, um, which with some of these I was doing to, to just like over illustrate the problem. Um, but also you can see that there's this colored gradient that sort of goes from red over to green. And yet on the edges of the picture, it actually looks like it's clipped. It's like very, very black. So, it, you know, it's got all sorts of issues. So what I was doing is basically working through a, a process of elimination. Um, you know, I, I cleaned the optics and then um, the next thing I was trying to do was to, to centre this vignette because, you know, just anything, you, you get to a stage where you're, where you're in desperation, you're curing all every little issue that you can in the hope that your main problem is a side effect of the small issue. So the thing that I was trying to do next was to centre this vignette, get that over, you know, so it's nicely in the middle. And that's what we're going to cover in this video is how I did it and just a little sort of tip that illustrates um, just how you can centre your vignette, which will, in effect actually also centres um, your field of view of your scope with your sensor in your camera because obviously the vignette is, if, if you imagine that the whole picture is your sensor, then the middle of your vignette is your is the center of your optical field. So ob obviously the two aren't aligned in, in this picture. So like I said, that's what we're gonna do in this video and I'll show you how I did it. Right, before we move over to the dining room table workbench, um, I'm just gonna give you a, a closer look at this. Um, this is an EL panel, an electroluminescent panel. And what you do with these is basically the, the only sort of paper thin and laminated when you buy one. And you sandwich the, this, this EL panel between opal acrylic sheeting um, and it gives you something like this. Now you can also vary the amount of brightness by using either double thicknesses of this opal acrylic or even some people put pieces of paper in between sort of sandwiching just to get the brightness that they're getting. Now, before I got this, I was actually using a, a laptop with the, the, the top open and a notepad screen, uh, making that full screen and just, you know, pushing the scope against that to make flats. But this is just so much easier. And we'll just give you a look at that. And there it is, you just basically switch on and you can start to make your flats straight away. This is an A3 size. You can get them in all sorts of various sizes, sort of, you know, normal paper size, if you like. Sort of A3, A4, etc. 
Um, I just happened to get the A3 because I've also got a Newtonian which I'm going to be using this with sort of in the near future. But it's just a very, very handy little tool. Um, you know, if you've got your own little sort of den or observatory, you can mount it actually on the wall near where your scope's mounted. And when you finish doing an imaging run, simply swing your mount round and, and point the scope at the, the EL panel. So it is just a, a very handy little tool there. Um, like I said, I was just giving you a little closer look before we, uh, we move over to the table. Right, as you can see, I've got everything uh, roughly set up here. Um, sometimes I've just got to fit stuff in where I can do uh, with regards to making these videos because we don't have the budget that some of the big studios have. Um, so we've got the EL panel there, which is just switched on to just basically make the video look nice at the moment. Um, the scope is pointing at it, and like I said, less than ideal circumstance, I'm actually balancing the scope on um, a, a USB hub box at the moment. Now what you need to bear in mind when you do take flats is that your imaging train has to be exactly the same as it was when you were actually taking your, your, your frames, you know, your actual images which means that the camera can't have been removed, the focus can't have been shifted, it has to be exactly the same or else, just the magic doesn't work quite as well. Um, so what we're going to do in a moment is, is connect up the laptop to the camera. Um, in this circumstance the imaging train isn't so important, but this system that I'm going to show you will definitely work better if you've taken um, a set of images, you know, you've, you've been out imaging and your focuser is in, the, in a point of focus with your camera, you know, your, your, your actual focus position is, is quite correct. Um, other than that, you know, I, I've just basically got the camera out and fitted it on because the, the, the perfection of the imaging train for just the little tip that I'm going to give you isn't that important. As I say, when you are actually taking flats, it is don't remove your camera, don't shift the focus on your scope or anything. Um, and like I said, the magic just doesn't work the same. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go over to um, the screen view on the computer and just show you this, uh, this little trick. Okay, before I actually start showing you um, the, the little technique that I discovered, a couple of people have asked me how I take my flats using my QHY8L and Easy Capture. So I'm just going to go through that procedure first. Right, the first thing that we do is we launch our EasyCap software and tell it that we're using a QHY8L and then in camera setup we go to temp control and we're going to turn off the tech cooling so just select tech off. The reason being that flats are not temperature dependent so we, we just would be cooling the camera down for, for nothing really. Next what we're going to do is just close up the preview screen and we want to select the capture screen. Once we've selected capture, go up to the image process menu and select noise analyze. Now next you want to select an exposure and we'll start off with something you know fairly sort of substantial in, in well as far as milliseconds are concerned. So let's try 475 milliseconds and click capture. Once it's finished capturing we'll be given the noise control or the noise levels of that particular image. Uh, on the screen which you'll see in just a second there we go and you can see that there's an RMS value which is the one that we're looking for now for taking flats we usually want something between 22 and 25,000 so just experiment now with the exposure and such as drop it down a little bit because we're looking for something between 22 and 25 I actually prefer to get as near as 23,000 as I can it's just a sort of a nice in-between amount so again we we'll wait for that capture to complete and we look over and now you can see that the RMS is 26,000 so again we we'll reduce down again and we keep doing this until we get to the level that we want to get at. Now you may find when you use your flats that you can get some adverse effects. Sometimes you can get in effect a reverse vignette and that means that you've actually you've given too much light, you've, you, your flat frame is too powerful. So you need to take your frames again and just reduce the light level in them, you know, sort of make them a little bit weaker. Uh, as you can see in this now we're getting down um, as, we, as we drop these 
these exposures down we're getting a, a, a lower RMS level now also in easy cap what you can do when you're setting finely such as this you can just click on that slider and use the arrow keys on your keyboard which will give you sort of fine settings uh, which you'll see me do in just a second uh, once it's finished this 300 millisecond capture and again see we now we've gone too low we've gone to 21,000 so you can see there that I've clicked and I'm actually using the arrow keys there to, to move that slider along and we click capture again and so on and we keep doing that until we hit our sort of 23,000 then we're going to eventually move over to actually taking our flats once we've once we've established that level because at this point all we've been doing is establishing that level that we want to take our flats at right once we've done that and we've actually established our exposure time that's given us the right rms value what we need to do next is move up to planner so you click planner and then click on open planner table and this is actually sort of the, the exposures planner if you like for in, in easy cap so we tick on one because we want to take one round of exposures now when you put in your exposure time don't put the zero in just put 0.323 or you know whatever your, your fraction of a second is don't put the zero before uh, then obviously click on a folder to save it to I'm just going to use the desktop here and click OK and then you can just click start that will then start to take your frame now the reason why I do this and don't sort of use the repeat box there and set it up to say 25 or something like that or as how many flats that I want is that the QHY8 it does something that they call double shuttering it actually under four seconds of an exposure it tries to take two exposures it sort of double shutters if you like so what we do is just do one at once and I just wait a couple of seconds and I click start again and you know just work through it that way and it's not like it's any major amount of time out of your life you know you're only taking sort of 20 25 flats um you know just this way just works for me um you know i might be making a cup of coffee in the kitchen while i'm doing it or something now once we drop this down you'll see my two flats are there on my desktop and they're actually associated on my computer with a program called Fitz Liberator, which you can download and install. It's just a handy little tool. So if I do double click one of those, it opens Fitz Liberator. Once in Fitz Liberator, what we can do next is we just need to click where it says linear over there. Just change that to arc sign, like so. And once it's it's done sort of this this semi D bear if you like, you can then sort of mess about with other controls and, and zoom in and zoom out. But also if you look over on the right hand side, it will give you all the data as well for your flat. It will give you that mean um, level, which is the same as the average was in um, in Easy Cap. Uh, now it may read just slightly different. Sometimes it's due to sort of different software reading files slightly differently. Um, you know other things it might be that you know your exposure is just very slightly different than the last one you know nothing's absolutely total under total control you may just get a, a slight difference in averaging between them now as I said you can zoom in and you can you can sort of look at your, your flat frame if you like um, you know some it, it has different levels of success this program it's a little bit sort of either complicated or um, not very good I don't know which one but there you can see the dust bunny that I've just zoomed into uh, which was on on the screen and you can zoom out of it now also this is handy if you're actually taking your image frames because it will show your image frames on that screen you can just have a look and make sure that you're framed nicely and everything um, it's just like a, a quick way of uh, previewing uh, a captured frame so we'll close that one now and move on to actually centering this vignette within uh, our our CCD frame. Right, as you can see, I've actually got the scope upside down now, uh, sitting on the box and looking at the EL panel. Uh, this is purely for illustration purposes so that you can see what it is that I'm doing. Um, and the screws that we're going to be altering are actually just these two tensioner screws for the focuser. And this, this sort of adjustment even makes a difference which way the scope's oriented. Um, but I'll just go in close up a little bit and just show you those two screws that I'm talking about. Right, it's actually these two screws, one on each side. 
Uh, in fact, if you look, if you, if you took the focus of species, this is actually sort of, um, it's like a, a, a Teflon channel, if you like, that's held by the central screw and then can be tilted using these two adjustment screws. And it's all to do with actually tensioning the focuser up. Uh, now I've got the motor attached onto this focus, so which I've actually got it disengaged at the moment, which means that I can fairly freely turn the focuser. Now at this point, it's also important that you actually have your focus lock tightened up to, to roughly where you'd have it. Remember I said earlier that really you want to be doing this when you've been outside imaging and your focus hasn't been altered. Um, so hopefully your focus lock is on and roughly in the position where you would normally have it. Now, as I said, the, the orientation of the scope even makes a slight difference to this. So really, this adjustment, it's if you've got an extreme um, sort of case of where you, your vignette is sort of way over to one side, and this will help you, it will roughly centralise it for you. Um, but as I said, it will, it will move that little bit just with the orientation of the scope. If I were to take a flat now and put it through CCD inspector and then turn the scope back the right way around and take another flat and put it through CCD inspector, it will have moved a little bit. So like I said, it's just if, it, if it's an extreme. Uh, but I just wanted to illustrate the, the whole thing because I found it actually quite interesting how much that you can adjust your whole imaging train just by how you've got you know the, the the tension of your focuser set up and it just shows how much play there actually is in uh, in a Crayford focuser right a moment ago you heard me mention CCD inspector now this is CCD inspector and it's actually uh, there is an evaluation version of it but the the producers do stipulate if you find it useful then you know do purchase it but it's it's an unlimited uh, evaluation copy that you can download from the CCD inspector website so what we do is the first thing is we just take another flat so go back into your easy cap and just take a flat frame and what we're going to do is we're going to analyse it in CCD inspector. Right, once our flat frame has been taken, uh, we go to CCD inspector, just drag your flat frame into CCD inspector and highlight it. Then move up to the menus, analysis and flat frame analysis. Now what that will do is analyse the flat frame and it will bring up an image of your flat uh, with the analysis illustrated like so. And you can you may not be able to see too well actually on the video but there will be two crosses. One is your, in effect your scope imaging uh, centre and the other one is your CCD centre so really they should be at the same. It also shows you the, um, the level of, of sort of brightness or illuminance if you like um, around that vignette. In, in your image and you can see that's that's fairly centered at the moment so we close that and next I'm just going to turn one of the little screws that I showed you previously on the scope and I'm going to take another frame so we we'll just take another flat frame you can see now that we have two flat frames there on the desktop so we're just going to drag the second one into um, CCD inspector and we're going to open up that last one that we just took and again click on analysis and flat frame analysis and you can actually see the difference I actually turned the screw about an eighth of a turn uh, that bolt on the focuser that I showed you earlier and look at the difference that's a much more even vignette uh, now what I will do is I will also open up the first one that we took and you can have a look at them side by side and you can see that we've made a really big difference to actually the balance the overall illumination balance the centering and and everything it's just it's just a far more um, pleasing more pleasing looking uh, analysis um, what we'll do next is I'll just put the two side by side so that you can have a look at them and compare but for an eighth of a turn on a screw um, it's just a, quite a large difference that and it is something just to bear in mind it's just a very very easy um, little procedure to perform but it also it just shows you how much you know difference you can make you think that you're, you're improving your Crayford focuser by just tensioning it up a little bit you don't realize that you're moving a, a whole set of, of imaging train that's like fine fairly finely tuned and balanced really so there we are uh, there are the two analyses just shown side by side and as I said that was an eighth of a turn of one adjustment screw and that's about it for this one so um, I just you know hope that you've got something out of it it was just something that I learnt as I was working through analysing my, my own issue and once again thanks for watching